radiators and fans. At this stage, we are going to take a look on how to install our two massive radiators as well as its seven 120mm diameter RGB fans. This build is going to feel and look cool. Our first loop will be cooled by a 480mm radiator. It will support four 120mm fans and will keep our GPU as cool as possible. The reason why I went with such a large radiator is to give myself the option to upgrade my build with multiple GPUs in the future. A 360mm radiator, which can accommodate up to three 120mm fans, will be in charge to keep our CPU cool. The 480XE model has at least twice the thickness of its shorter and slimmer 360PE. Typically thicker radiators dissipate more heat out of our cooling mix, therefore this is the best choice we can get for multiple GPUs. Fun-wise, performance and aesthetic had to go hand in hand, therefore I went for RGB high static pressure fans. My only regret is that they are not OR compliant. Therefore, we will have to deal with a separated RGB controller as well as a RGB fan hub. And here are our three 120mm fans. They all come with two cables, one for our RGB controller and the second one for our 5 volt power intake. All right. Time to assemble and install those radiators. First, let's remove the radiator supporting brackets. We have two of them on each side of our chassis. A few screws for each side and you should be done in no time. Let's start with the easiest one, our second loop radiator. Let's add to it our three 120mm fans, some screws and screwdriver. First thing first, make sure that the radiator in and out takes are facing the table. The brackets shall go on the back of the radiator. Make sure that the sliding hooks point towards the in and outlets of our radiator. And now let's place our fans on the mounting bracket and secure them with the provided screws. While doing so, make sure that the fan's cables point toward the green arrows as shown on your screen. Additionally, as you tighten the screws, make sure to not overdo it. Finger tight is quite enough. Remember, our fan's chassis are in plastic and they could break if you tighten them too much. Let's do the exact same operation for our first loop radiator. The only difference here is that this is a 480 mm radiator and we will have an extra and force fan which will populate the radiator bracket. So take your time, follow the instructions on your screen and you should be done as well in no time. Let's give it a try. I know, it's lame, just had to do it. All right, now let's install our assembled radiators on the chassis. When facing the chassis, I am placing the second loop radiator on my right hand side. Once slid in, you can secure the radiator with the eight screws that we had removed in the beginning of the section. And again, let's do the very same operation with our first loop radiator. All right, time to connect all this mess. Let's start with our RGB fan connectors. For each loop, we are going to take those connectors and plug them in their respective fan hubs. Once done, we are going to disconnect the fan remote controls from the fan hubs. And this is where we are going to place our remote control. Simply remove the protecting film from the adhesive band and firmly put it into place. Once done, take the remote cable and send it back inside the case. And same operation for our other radiator and other remote control. Let's go back in our case and put in place our fan hubs. So I decided to put them right on the side of our radiators, after which I reconnected our fan remote control on the fan hubs. And finally, this is the time to connect our seven radiator fans on their respective fan controllers. 
But before we do so, I would like to address the few comments I had regarding this part of the build. As you can tell, the edges around the fan controllers are still a little bit messy. And rest assured that by the end of this build, we will address this thanks to the custom made LED covers we will apply through this build. So stay tuned for that. All right, back on our fans connectors. On our lower controller, we will connect our first loop four fans. And on our upper controller, we will connect the second loop three fans. Back on the back, each of our controllers come with five fan connectors, one thermo sensor and a three pin Molex plug. And now we can simply go ahead with a connection of our loops fan to the respective controllers. There's nothing much to it, simply make sure that your fans are connected to the right fan controller. Before installing our thermo sensor, make sure to remove the protective cover which comes with it. For this build, I have decided to place both thermo sensors on the very top of both of our radiators. And the reason why I did that is to avoid those sensors to be in the direct path of our fan's exhaust, which could give us a corrupt idea of what the real temperature of our system is. And finally, the last step of this section is to connect our main exhaust fan to the connector of any of our front fan controllers. Next up, the GPUs. Boop, 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 boop.